So we're going to shift gears from uh, starting new to um, uh, giving the uh, podium to uh, Dr. Sartor uh, Balfour Sartor uh, from uh, UNC. And he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of flexibility you need to keep an established notobiotic facility uh, functioning and evolving over time. Thank you. Great. Um, well, I, I really enjoyed the uh, initial presentation. And my advice is get a psych consult and have ongoing psychotherapy uh, <laughs> a, a, as you take, take on this. Uh, right. So um, basically, I have a two-component talk if I can uh, 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 have the time to do it. So first, I want to talk about the technical aspects of evolving and established uh, uh, notobiotic facility. So there are certain elements I want to go through, uh, and I'm going to do it piecemeal. The first element to sustain success of a notobiotic unit, and I'm completely talking off the top of my head without consulting others. This is my experience, so take that for what it's uh, worth. Uh, is to make sure, uh, number one, that the mission and the cost structure that you're trying to set up matches those of your users. I've seen too many people go in with grandiose ideas, and it's not what that institution really needs. Uh, and then secondly, to have sustained broad-based funding, because one dean may approve something, the next dean says, why are we putting this money in? So um, to amplify on that, uh, I've had the great fortune to run uh, something we euphemistically call the National Notobotic Rodent Resource Center, because to my knowledge, this is the only facility that is NIH funded as a resource. It's in the same uh, category from the uh, comparative medicine uh, unit of the, of the NIH, originally the uh, NCRR, now the Office of the Director, that funds the primate centers uh, and other nematode centers and other resources. So uh, the, our goal is to be a resource for both local, regional, national, and even international uh, multidisciplinary investigators looking uh, uh, to examine the hypothesis that resident microbiota, uh, in this case, Skip, I apologize, I say bacteria, uh, I may flip over to microbiota, I'm, I'm talking primarily on, on bacteria, but what this, these facilities are equally uh, relevant to other uh, organisms, uh, bacteria, uh, viruses, uh, fungi, et cetera. Uh, so basically, explore the hypothesis that the resident bacteria fundamentally influence normal physiology in normal hosts and contribute to uh, inflammatory metabolic and neoplastic responses in susceptible hosts uh, that are either genetically susceptible or environmentally uh, susceptible. And the aims of our center, most recently, are to, to provide both axenic, which is germ-free, uh, completely devoid of uh, all organisms not incorporated into their genome, uh, uh, are notobiotic, meaning defined microbiota um, for NIH our local uh, uh, center uh, and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation funded investigators who are looking at diverse host microbial interactions. So we are, I'm gut oriented, but we uh, fund, we provided mice to Stan Hazen, for example, looking at atherosclerosis. Derive additional germ-free genetically engineered mouse strains. So if you want a uh, 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 competitively priced uh, uh, new mouse strain, uh, happy to talk, support pilot studies for investigators uh, who are uh, trying to generate data for uh, new applications, prioritizing young and new investigators by the NIH criteria, train personnel, uh, as uh, Tim mentioned, uh, from other uh, institutions who want to start a facility and develop innovative techniques that's going to help the uh, entire field. So the history is that, like everyone else, we had a local need and a local uh, interest. Uh, and Phil Carter, who had trained, somebody mentioned Lobund uh, Laboratories at Chicago uh, the other day, 
Uh, he trained at Loban Laboratories and brought this technology to UNC. We had a GI center, thought this would be a really cool core facility. So in 85, so we're, we're 31 <laughs> years old, uh, which boggles my mind. Um, we, uh, all the users, however, were, this was at the vet school, all the users were 30 miles down the road with too much traffic. Uh, so we moved that facility in 2001 to expand the higher user base locally, uh, and we uh, uh, provided critical backup as well. Contamination happens despite your best SOPs and best trained people. Uh, and uh, likewise, we had a Newton Mouse uh, Regional uh, Resource Center uh, that uh, was there, and, and so that was, was funded by the uh, uh, NCRR as well. And then we had the uh, uh, fortune to have an NIH grant externally funded by this uh, comparative medicine group started in 2004. Uh, funding sources. I mentioned you need multiple funding sources be beyond a dean who uh, uh, believes in what you're doing. Uh, we, uh, we, we are funded by our uh, NIDDK uh, core center, the DDRC, uh, since uh, 85. Uh, we moved with a consortium of the North Carolina Biotechnology Center. We bought isolators, the dean's office, matching funds. Uh, we got a supplement through the center. Crohn's and Colitis Foundation pitched in. Ed Baelish was retiring at University of Wisconsin, so we got some of his old facilities, as well as incredible training from Ed. That was remarkable. Uh, we got the resource grant, uh, uh, P40 and 04. Uh, we funded then by the CCFA, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Uh, we uh, got a, uh, uh, it's a core facility and a, um, a program project grant that, that I had. Uh, and we've encouraged investigators who need large uh, resources to write into their grants. And that's a critical part as well. And then program income. You will laugh when I, you just said, Sartre's not a very good businessman. Uh, they get 500 bucks uh, at, um, uh, at Taconic. Well, the reason we charge 30 bucks is because we want NIH people to use it. And you know from your NIH budget that you don't have that much in, uh, uh, for, for mice. Uh, our rentals are 300 bucks a month, and we charge uh, 3,500 for our germ-free derivations. Uh, you need, if you want to advocate for your institution to start up a fund, uh, you got to be creative. And I think Tim showed us uh, that he's creative. Uh, you need to tell the dean that, um, let's see if I can go backwards. Uh, you need to tell the dean that this is going to help current uh, uh, faculty get grants uh, and do some really cool mechanistic studies that will feed back with indirect cost. Uh, to the dean's office. Uh, you can uh, recruit talented faculty. Uh, Tim, I bet you wouldn't have gone to Pittsburgh without a commitment that you would have such a facility. Uh, and if you already had a facility and didn't have to run it, it'd be even better. Uh, so uh, increase national visibility and reputation and do some really cool studies. So we, like Pittsburgh, started small. Um, we had three users. I was one as a junior faculty. Um, we have grown. We've kind of tapped out on the number of users each year. They rotate uh, because each person wants to do bigger studies and more complex use of facilities. So the number of mice have gone up uh, considerably uh, where the users uh, have not. Our use of isolators has uh, 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 dramatically increased from the get-go, but with NIH funding, we've still gone up fourfold. Uh, we started with rats. Uh, we expanded rat uh, strains, got into mice, uh, abandoned the rats, and moved forward with the mouse strains. Uh, John Rawls came from, um, came, came from Jeff Gordon's lab uh, with notobotic zebrafish. He then moved to uh, they uh, moved uh, on to Duke, uh, so uh, we no longer do zebrafish. But we are the rodent 
uh, Resource Center. Um, these are the current strains that we have. All strains are because uh, somebody convinced us that multiple people would use it. Uh, we have three wild-type mice, Balb C, C57, um, uh, 129s. I have a particular interest in IL, uh, the function of IL-10, so we have IL-deficient mice on uh, two different backgrounds. Uh, I'm having trouble finding the other one here, but black six as well. Uh, we, uh, we have an IL-10 reporter mouse. Uh, GFP lights up when IL-10 uh, uh, transcription is uh, turned on. Uh, we have uh, IL-10 RAG2 double knockout, so we can do T and B cell transfers. Uh, and we have IL-10 linked with NF-kappa B uh, reporter mouse. This is way too many strains. We can't sustain this. We use at least two isolators as a backup. Uh, and that's uh, uh, more than we can handle. Um, sustained success need, needs stable leadership, staff continuity, and a feeling of ownership. Uh, our secret is Maureen Bauer, used to run uh, Taconic facilities, uh, was there for 20 years. She retired. I heard that she was bored. Uh, we got her down for a visit, and she stayed. <laughs> She was going to stay for three years. She's now been there since 2004. Uh, so uh, it's been a tremendous partnership, and I give her all the credit. She has trained our local people, brings uh, vast experience, and has this one-week training program uh, that Tim uh, referred to, where people coming from other programs uh, can, can learn. An important thing is hire the right people. Uh, in a slide I'm not showing, OCD is a, is a valuable uh, uh, component of choosing people, uh, you know, uh, because you've you got to do things immaculately well. This requires extensive experience. You really need to recognize that these are not cage changers. These are your partners. And uh, if, if you have great people, the contamination rate is much less. Uh, you need to provide upper, upward mobility where people who are cage washers want to move to your facility. Uh, you, you want your entry-level people to uh, stay. And so we try to give them increased experiences with uh, te techniques. Uh, but it is hard work. A lot of people get tired of having their hands like this uh, all day and get shoulder problems. That's, that's been a problem. Uh, I think an important part is having the, 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 the scientists come back and tell the technicians what they did, what they found with, with the technicians' hard work, uh, what, uh, what really cool thing was discovered. And I, I think that's important. Uh, you need a committed core user base. We have about 35, 40 users each month, I'm sorry, each year, but uh, probably there's a core group of 15 or so that are every year using our uh, facility. We need, you need uh, equitable prioritization. Uh, if, the, if it seems like the director is getting most of the fruit of the labor, that's not good. Uh, so I'm, I'm proud to say that I am equally backed up in, in my own experiments. Uh, we, we just put in uh, a web-based scoring system where you get prioritization points for NIH, CCFA funding, uh, a local center member, young new investigator, how long you've been on the list, whether you have a manuscript or grant pending. Uh, and the score determines when you get the mice. Uh, you need to plan your facility so it can expand and upgrade, and you continuously need to upgrade services. Um, something that Pitt may want to take advantage of is we custom derived a surgical isolator. So your transplant surgeons perhaps could do something here. So over here, there's a port. You link this port to that port, bring the mice in. There's a warming blanket in here, uh, stereotactic uh, 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 microscope, surgery gloves, not quite as thin as normal gloves. You do your uh, uh, heavy lifting over with the regular gloves, but surgical gloves here. Pass them back out 
into an isolator post-op. Um, so what, uh, it, it, what kind of science evolves too? It's really important not to just do the same thing over and over. NIH figures that out. Uh, you need to, to always be nimble. So at one time, it was sufficient to compare germ-free versus SPF, or conventionalized, quote, uh, a germ-free animal. And then you can look at timing of colonization, uh, kinetics of host response. Yesterday, we talked about age-dependent response. Rick Blumberg said you have to colonize at a particular point. You look at mono-associated, dual-associated, defined group-associated, fecal transplant uh, from either mouse or human, different phenotypes of mice or human, uh, bacterial strain-specific responses, function of bacteria, something you can do in mice, can't do in humans. Uh, you can alter uh, genes of bacteria or genes of uh, host, uh, knock out transgenic mutants. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, IL-10 reporters, NF-kappa B reporters. You can look at gene expression uh, in either the host or the bacteria under different conditions. You can humanize uh, with uh, fecal transplant from humans, human immune response, uh, 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 stem cell transplants, and NSG plus minus uh, human uh, MHC, which Scott Snapper has been doing, human diets, metabolomic studies, and finally bacterial adaptation. Um, stole this from Jeff Gordon. Jay, uh, Jay will recognize this. Uh, but uh, basically, you can have germ-free mice compared to a conventionally raised uh, mouse. You can selectively colonize or put in a fecal transplant. Uh, at one time, it was sufficient back in the 90s to say no bacteria, no immune activation, no colitis. Uh, put in bacteria into a genetically susceptible animal, uh, resident bacteria, SPF, and lo and behold, you get immediate macrophage TH1, TH17 activation and colitis in one week uh, that increases over time. Uh, it's then important to say, well, what's the function of bacteria? Are all bacteria equal? And no, they're not. Germ-free rat, HLA-B27 transgenic rat, no colitis. Complex microbiota, aggressive colitis, B. vulgatus, uh, which causes uh, uh, guinea pig uh, uh, colitis and guinea pig sped carrageenan. Moderate colitis, E. coli, nothing. Uh, probiotic uh, protection. All these same bacteria have different activities in different hosts. So there's host specificity as well. B. vulgatus in transgenic rats causes colitis. E. coli efficalis doesn't. Exactly the opposite in IL-10 knockout animals, mono-associated. And yet in another uh, animal that's that no colitis germ-free, Cox Terhorse uh, uh, did this, uh, none of these are active. So uh, host specificity, bacterial specificity, host specificity, bacterial strain specificity. Um, here we have uh, a mouse E. coli, uh, human Crohn's disease E. coli, and a uh, lab strain of E. coli. Uh, two cause colitis in mono-associated IL-10 knockout mice, uh, one doesn't. These turn out to be adherent invasive E. coli. Uh, one of the questions I asked earlier. They're not pathogens because uh, the, uh, the wild-type mouse uh, equal growth uh, of bacteria, no colitis. Um, Kenny Simpson, a uh, close collaborator, took these uh, uh, E. coli strains, sequenced them, found that they were increased in pathways of uh, uh, propane diol and iron transport. So we knocked out uh, different uh, genes, and some of these made a difference, either up or down. Uh, some made no difference. Uh, we hypothesized that uh, in the normal state, uh, resident E. coli chow down on fucose from, uh, from mucus uh, and not ethanolamine, but ethanolamine liberated by lysed membranes from in inflammation preferentially leads to the growth and metabolic activity of adherent invasive E. coli uh, that uh, 
uh, don't use bucose quite as well. And that iron uptake and utilization, uh, 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 these, my, these, these E. coli have about five siderophores, where this only has one, uh, fosters growth and virulence of the AIC. So we knock out pathways for uh, uh, ethanolamine, uh, and we uh, uh, have less colitis. However, if you knock out a fucose utilization pathway, you actually get worse disease, again, in monoassociated mice. You can look at function of uh, E. coli. So here's our adherent invasive E. coli. You put it into an IL-10 knockout, germ-free animal, or a wild-type animal, and you get different transcriptional activation uh, uh, with up regulation of many oxidative stress genes, acid stress genes. Um, uh, John Hansen, a faculty member at UNC, has knocked out uh, IPB A and B, GAD A and B, uh, Oxy S, makes a difference. Uh, we have made our own consortia, Jay, uh, of, um, uh, um, and Andrew, uh, uh, made our own consortium taking, uh, taking gut bacteria of human origin, genomic sequence available, all capable of colonizing the gut uh, bacteria, uh, the, the, uh, st the mouse uh, GI tract, uh, going from proteobacteria to firmicutes, and showed that you get colitis, Again, genetic background differences, BLAC6, 129 differences. Um, and, but a way of seeing which may have predominant uh, activity is to do ex vivo stimulation with lysates of these uh, strains. And the E. coli and ruminococcus are by far and away dominant. Uh, we have used an IL-10 reporter animal to, to try to see which bacteria upregulate IL-10, uh, and clearly SPF mice uh, have uh, colitis, uh, have IL-10. Uh, these are wild-type animal, normal IL-10 production, but an EGFP and basically progressive increase uh, in IL-10 production. Uh, and we showed that, if I can make this dead gun thing work, uh, we, we showed that uh, TGF beta is likewise upregulated, and it's predominantly coming. Uh, it's predominantly coming from uh, uh, FoxP3 negative T cells, uh, TR1s, uh, naive CD4 cells, and B cells. So I'm going to move to the end. Ah. All right. I'm going to move to the end and, and just say that we are trying to identify protective bacteria using this technique. Uh, uh, challenges. Well, I think, uh, again, we need to meet the needs. Uh, we have too many requests, far too few. Even with 100 isolators, we, we can't meet everybody's need. We have to prioritize. Uh, uh, I think it's particularly important uh, to try to do germ-free derivations for new strains. Maybe some centers can do this efficiently, others not. We need to match the cost of the running the facility with the user's ability to pay. We need to better integrate resources between centers to avoid redundancy. We, we really ought to have a network where not everyone uh, breeds large numbers of not commonly used mice. Probably everybody needs to do black six. Uh, uh, you need to do what your workhorse is, but I think we ought to be sharing uh, strains quite a bit. We, there ought to be a central repository for cryopreserved embryos, uh, centralized registries, who has what, so you know who to go to, rather than trying to create your own uh, and just learn that, uh, that, that uh, another institution has it. Uh, develop centralized banks of tissue so you don't kill mice just for uh, germ-free versus SPF liver. Uh, standardize uh, the defined bacterial consortia, big topic from this morning. Uh, um, uh, Dr. McPherson's uh, uh, discussion. Um, 
We need to investigate trans-kingdom microbial interactions, Skip's uh, 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 take-home message. And it's very hard to do metabolomics uh, within the isolators. <laughs> need to work out some techniques uh, beyond just stool collection. Uh, so I want to thank everybody who did it. And here's, uh, in case you wanted to uh, start your own facility, uh, there, there's your marching orders.